let us abstract away the idea of a mutable uh, state as a functional pattern. So to that end, we're going to have uh, this example uh, where we're doing as follows. We are allocating a handle uh, with the number one here. It's the first operation we have here. Uh, and then we are assigning x to it, the result that was allocated. Um, and then we are allocating a number two that is assigned to y. So this is the handle y. And finally, we want to um, perform addition here as the third op operation. So we allocate x, a, a, re a reference to one and then a reference to two and finally we want to add the contents of each reference together and allocate its result in a variable called z okay so i went ahead and i copy pasted this example in this file and i ran it and things are running fine so you will notice that i defined um, a function called run state which just prints out the state of um, the program. So if I do, here we go. So notice that our program is parameterized by the initial heap. So if I um, call, if I call um, my program one, and I pass an empty heap, let's see what, what is being returned. So that returns an EFF, right? Uh, which contains what? It's going to contain the the heap that results from allocating uh, Z, right? And Z. So the result is going to be Z. This is handle two. So if I um, call my function prog1 and I pass it an initial empty heap, that's what I get essentially a heap that contains the reference to x, the reference to y, and the reference to z, uh, plus the reference z itself. Okay, uh, and then what I did was I created this function called run state, uh, which simply takes the EFF state. So I, I do not care about the result at all. Um, so if I just compute the run state, I just get the final state. Of the of the memory, so the initial state state is empty heap. The final state is calling the field state from program one. Okay, uh, so that returns a heap, um, and therefore when I do um, run state, that's exactly what it does. So it uses the empty heap, and it calls this function prog one, and it returns the out the final uh, heap. So as you can see, it's exactly the same thing. Okay, so I can even write a test case for that, just to convince you, check equal. Okay, so now you understand what run state does. Okay, it just hides away the initial defaults to the um, ignoring the result, essentially, and just capturing the state. Okay. So now uh, the test case I wrote is um, the expected heap, which is a heap with x, y, and z, that is defined in this variable, which is exactly the same heap as before. Okay, and therefore checking if the result is h will succeed. Okay. Um, okay. So now. What we would like to do so clearly there are two kinds of operations going on here one is um or a few actually there are, uh, there are two yeah so one is uh the idea of uh allocating a number so let's try to uh abstract away that as a function so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to copy paste this uh, and i'm going to define here i'm going to call it define number Okay, a number takes a number n, okay, and then what it does is um, returns a lambda that given a parameter he h, which is the heap, okay, 
Okay. What's going to do is it's going to return. Uh, it's just going to do a heap allocation of that. So age and the number n. That's what I did, right? Yeah. Um, okay. So it's a very basic thing. The only thing I wanted to try to do is start. I want to start refactoring out or separating the parameter that is on the operation from, or or to put it another way, I want to abstract away um, the memory. Okay, so my idea is, okay, so if I have this code that is always repeating, uh, if I make the heap, and the heap is what I want to abstract away, right? This threading of the heap from one operation to the next. So what I would like to do is I need to abstract away uh, the heap as a parameter. Okay, so the best way we know to abstract away the heap is by means of a lambda. So we'll just take a, a lambda that takes a heap and we'll call that, that's going to be uh, like a heap operation. So if this is a heap operation, what is actually being uh, created? Well, the heap operation is parameterized on the one, right? This is the unique different thing about this these three lines of code. Is this one, whereas here it's two. So if I want to refactor these two operations to be the same, what do I need to do? Well, the only thing I need to do is I need to parameterize the number here. That's exactly what I did. So I created this number here. Um, and then the next thing I want to do is uh, addition. Okay, so addition is going to abstract away this thing. So addition is going to allocate and perform uh, the, the addition itself. So let's try to do that. So define addition and addition takes two reference. So X and Y. Uh, and then it's parameterized on the age as well. Okay. Then what it does is Okay, so given the heap, I'm going to obtain X, I'm going to obtain Y, and I'm going to add the result, their results together. Okay, and that return value, that result, I'm going to allocate it. I'm going to call this V, just for the sake of readability, call this V. Okay, so I'm allocating on H, V, and V results from reading X and Y and adding them together. The order really doesn't matter because we're using the same heap. So you could also change, flip the order if you wanted to. Okay, so I defined these two operations and now let me refactor the code. So let me go back, try to refactor the code. What I see now is instead of um, heap, I'm going to have a num1. Num1, I'm going to pass h1. Okay, and then here, instead of uh, allocating explicitly, what I want to do is I, I reorder. Essentially, the only thing I did was reorder. But by reordering the, the things that are similar and abstracting them away, right, so I abstract away the logic of, um, okay, and then finally here, we just finish this x, y, uh, and finally I want to pass the h3. So it becomes more evident when the addition, okay? Okay, so what I did in program two is, okay, so program one takes an h, and then what we do is we refactor the way allocation of a number, refactor away allocation of another number, refactor the way addition. Okay, so this is all encapsulated. Right, these three things. So now I can see the things that are just about the threading of values from one step to the next, right? So what we would like to do, so I'm going to call this bind. Okay, so what bind is going to do is given a function that expects a heap, I'm going to call this my continuation, right? Or my operation, my heap operation. Okay, so if I have a heap operation, like num, right, takes a heap, so this bit takes a heap and returns an EFF. And I want to have a continuation. So what I want to do with it is I want to take, I want to run it. 
So I'm going to do heap op. Oh, of course, this has to be lambda x for the same reason. Okay. So I take my... So bind is going to be an operator that combines things like these. Okay. So let's see how that works. So since bind has to be itself an operation, it also takes a lambda as a parameter. Okay. Again, because what we want to do is we want to un make uniform the idea where the, the heap must always be passing around. So any kind of combinator also has to behave in the same way so that we can glue things together. Okay, so then what do I want to do is I want to call my heap op, right? So I want to do basically this bit. Okay. So... This is going to be our heap operation. Okay, and the input heap is going to be H. Okay, and the output heap is going to be H2. I mean, you can even call it H1 and H2. So if I call my heap operation, that's going to return an EFF. So it's going to return a heap H2 plus a result. Okay, where this is the result and H2 is here. Call this h2 plus result. And this is going to be h2 plus result. Okay, so now I have a result and I have h2. How can I pass h uh, the result and h2 to something else? Well, we can use a function for that. So how do we would we use it? Well, what we want to do is we want to pass it uh, the result separately. So I'm going to call continuation of the result. And what that has to return has to be, again, a heap operation. So if it's a heap operation, I want to pass around the h2. Okay. So now you may be wondering, why am I um, not passing h2 to the continuation directly? Well, the reason you're not doing that is because then you would be losing this compatibility, right? We want to make sure that everything that we are playing with has this interface that takes a heap and produces an EFF. Okay, so that, that's always the common theme. So this, a heap produces an EFF. Okay, so this also takes a heap, produces an EFF. This also takes a heap, produces an EFF, right? Similarly, this bind operation takes a heap, produces an EFF, okay? So this way, our continuation, the only way for our continuation to work is, continuation is taking some, is parameterized on the result, and that will return something that given a heap will produce some EFF. Okay, so now let's see how we could abstract away program two as a program three. We take this. Now what we do is observe the magic. What we do is we do bind, okay? And what we do is we bind this operation. Re recall that we are abstracting away all this. So The result of abstracting away all that is going to be the result. So that's what's being passed around, right? The result is what is passed to the continuation. So you can think of this continuation as a lambda that, that given the result should return a new um, heap operation. Okay. So we just refactor all of that. We refactored all of this. So what do we want to do next? Well, we want to assign Right, so we want to abstract away this second block of code. Right, the way we do this is with no, with bind again. What that returns in another lambda that takes a y. Okay, and finally takes a y, and then what it does? What does it do? Sorry. Well, it finally, given the y, it will call the addition. Okay. Oof. Okay, so now. 
Let's do this step by step. First, let's confirm, let's convince ourselves that the program two runs. Program one, we already noticed that it did run. So let's see if I didn't do any mistakes on program two. Okay, so program two does indeed run. I mean, the changes were minimal. I just changed the order of the parameters so that I made the heap always um, consistently on the right hand side. Second thing I do, I abstract away this pattern, the pattern right here in these three lines of code. The problem that I had was then how do I represent the rest of the code? Well, you know, because the rest of the co code has to have access to X and, and the heap. The way I did that was by giving a continuation function. So this continuation function takes the results first, and what that does is returns a, another um, heap operation, which you then have to give the new heap. So you have to provide first the result and then the heap. So what that returns, again, an EFF, uh, uh, sorry, a uh, heap operation. So we now are able to remove all these three lines, all these three lines, and this is the last thing. Now let's see if this works. So I want to copy paste this. Call this program three. Ah, of course, let's call this program three. Saying program two is already defined. Now it's saying I forgot a B somewhere. Now it's saying I forgot something somewhere. Let's see. EFF is waiting for an EFF and I gave it a procedure. The result is an EFF. The result is a... Saying in line eighty six. Ah, okay, sorry, yeah, I remember what it is. Right, so the key point here, this is a tricky one, is that um bind already takes that heap as a parameter, so we have to remove it from program three. Um so program three is now only defined with this. Uh just to recap, this H one was abstracted away inside the bind because the bind is always taking that heap as a parameter. Okay, so let's see what, if that works now. Yay, it worked. Okay, so we started from this code, and by using this bind operator, we simplify the code by all of this. Okay, and the key points to, to the, the key takeaways are as follows. So first thing we did, um, first of all, I mean, you're not expected to, you know, come up with this by your own, on your own. Um, but this is just, um, a walkthrough of how would one go about as to refactor such a pattern. So the first thing I noticed was there was some code repetition. And what I did from program one to program two was, uh, make, make the code repetition more apparent by, um, encapsulating the behavior that is different within a function. Okay, so what is different here? What is always the same? Well, the H1 is the same, but the problem is this, it's, it's in this function call. So what I did was, okay, let's abstract away this function call so that um, I use, I use uh, one parameter to give out what is different and what that returns is the EFF as usual. Okay, so from one to two, the only thing. So the things that are different are all together. The things that are the same are all together. Sorry, the things that are different are encapsulated. Here in num1, here in num2, and finally here in add. The things that are the same, they're all um, explicit here. That simplifies the second step, which is refact the refactoring itself, right? The generalization. What we notice is that we have a bunch of defines. If you just put that inside a function, you have no way of, 
you know, passing them around. So what we did was, uh, first of all, we have this uniform, um, so all the functions, all the operations, uh, heap operations, again, RLM that, that take a heap. And this is the tree defines that existed in the repeated code. So how do you communicate them? Easy, you use a function. Okay, so if you use a function, we want the function to ultimately return a heap operation so that it can be combined further. Right, so that's why uh, it takes this heap here. Uh, but we also want it to pass to be parameterized, right? Because we want it to be able to accept the result. So the way we communicate the result is by calling the continuation or the function, passing the result. What that will do is then in its turn, return a heap operation, which is then uh, used to pass the new heap. And with this, you have a very powerful com combinator called bind, and you can think of it as just a variable declaration, where the idea is you evaluate this number and what that does is returns the result of allocating, right? Because this num1 is, you could also call it uh, alloc, right? Allocation. So if I wanted, I could just call it alloc. I call this alloc, right? Because that's the only thing it's abstracting away. So alloc, alloc, uh, here, alloc, and here alloc. So what we're doing is we're allocating a number, oops, uh, and then what bind will do is it will take care of the heap for you automatically uh, and expose the result of allocating, which is the reference, to the follow to the continuation, which is given as a lambda. What lam what the lambda has to return has to be another uh, operation, another heap operation, the way. Uh, then what I want to do is I want to allocate a second value, so I do bind a lock, and that in turn needs another continuation, so that it can, you know, it can take the y, and finally you can pass the x and y to another uh, heap operation, which was the add, uh, and that's it. So I call my run state, I give it an empty heap, and it produces the same exact heap as before. Okay, so let's go step by step. In this slide, I'm summarizing the num and add operations. I'm gonna revert the changes just so that it's, so that it matches the slides. Oops, making sure it still runs, yes. Okay, so I created the num numerical operation. I created a lambda, uh, and these are known as effectful operations if we want to be more general. Uh, and that is because they take the state and they produce an EFF. Um, so I did one to add, one to allocate and one to add. Actually, these titles are reversed or flipped. Um, and then what I did was I refactored around this code and you can see in these slides uh, the refactoring going on from left to right. Uh, and finally, I change all the code to use binds. So this three lines match the bind and the second three ma lines match the bind. And what is different in these lines is the num1, so that's what appears here. What is different num2, that's what appears here. What is different here is add, that's what appears here. Okay, so bind is actually a very powerful operator and we're gonna see a bit more about that. And it basically works as a variable declaration. You're declaring x and assigning it the result of num1. Here you're declaring y and you're assigning the result of num2. So, but the problem is that the order kind of is flipped. But this is the basic idea. That's how you should think of bind. Think of bind as uh, define, if you will, define star. And in fact, we're gonna fix the syntax so it's more uh, standard. You know, that resembles a define a bit better. Okay, in the next video, we're going to introduce the idea of stack machines. Uh, just to, to drive the point across that the state doesn't need to be a heap. It could be anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the state to be a stack. Uh, and we're going to introduce uh, this concept of stack machine, which is used quite a lot in the implementation of programming languages, namely in uh, the JVM and Python.